And welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather. <laughs> Something stinks around here. Something stinks. Yeah, that's right, folks. It stinks. It stinks. And let me tell you what stinks. Earthquake forecasting. So, just to dispel that, we do not forecast earthquakes. I'm talking about this particular channel does not forecast earthquakes. I know some YouTube channels and some various other people around the world think that they're forecasting earthquakes. I don't believe them. I've heard a lot of nonsense since these 7 and 8 magnitude earthquakes occurred in the Kermadec Trench. And we don't forecast earthquakes. I think anybody that claims that they're forecasting earthquakes is out of their mind. They're either mistaken or they're lying to you. And uh, if you're forecasting earthquakes, if you're a channel out there forecasting earthquakes, by all means, drop me a line. We'll feature you on the channel. We want to know what the mechanism is behind your earthquake forecasts. And more on this later. Speaking of moron, you're not forecasting earthquakes. YouTube channels with a combined millions of subscribers. So in today's daily space weather video, the first thing we're doing is we're looking at the sun here. It's 304 angstrom from the SDO. And we actually see zero sunspots. Actually, there is, I think, I think this is still a sunspot right here, but it's, it's been degrading to the point where it barely is a sunspot. That would be 2807. We'll let you know by the end of the video if it still is a sunspot or not. Here is the SDO's 171 angstrom's wavelength. One of the emission spectral states of ionized iron, 171 angstroms, a narrow band of the ultraviolet light spectrum. And by the way, yesterday I failed at forecasting a sunspot. I thought perhaps this area here would be one. I forecasted that we may see a sunspot in the east. And I can tell you what the mechanism was behind that because I'm not a hack. So the mechanism behind that was the magnetic data that we were seeing on the Gong 2, as well as the sudden uptick to 84 solar flux units on the 10.7 centimeter radio flux. Those two things are why I thought there may be a sunspot coming. I do not look at the Stereo A imagery for sunspots. I only look at the coronagraphs from Stereo A. In the future, I may actually look at solar imagery, but currently not. So speaking of the SOHO, this is at Lagrange point one, unlike the SDO, which is closer to the Earth. Here is the, uh, which view is this actually? This is the 195 angstroms view, which shows up green on the SOHO. And here is the 171 angstroms from the SOHO, which is shown in blue. More imagery of the sun toward the end of the video here. Again, those sunspots have been degrading. We've got some, some other wavelengths to show you there and so on from the SDO, including some composites here at the Smash News Network, least busted name and news. Next, looking at the uh, diagram of the solar system here, and uh, there you go. We've got half of an illuminated moon. If you're up before dawn, you may see it in the morning sky. I'm usually up before dawn, largely to make these videos. So here's where stuff is now. And there's where things will be in a week. One week from now shall be your new moon. And here's a star chart. You can see the moon is close to the apex here at about 530. <coughs> 5.30 Eastern time. And I use in dash the dash sky. If you're up before dawn, you may see some other objects rising ahead of the sun here as well, such as Saturn and Jupiter and Mercury practically overlapping there. So if you've got a good light pollution free view of the eastern horizon, you may see Jupiter and Mercury very close together. The 10.7 centimeter radio flux uh, at 73, it might be 74, 73 or 74, so quite low levels here. You can see this little peak happened. 
and then back down to around 70, I think it's 73 solar flux units is the current 10.7 centimeter radio flux. And this one year graph, the black line there, that's the radio flux. You can find this one yourself if you want to look at it yourself. It's at solon.info slash solar. The red line there, that's the sunspot number. And NOAA has totally changed the forecast here for the uh, incoming coronal hole wind stream. So in, originally we saw the coronal hole wind stream forecasted to strike in in its full glory early this morning, but that's gotten changed. And thanks for leaving a comment, John. Now the forecast is for at the end of the day today. So we were expecting to see geomagnetic storm conditions as per the NOAA forecast, uh, but we only saw a pretty weak coronal hole wind stream pulse, which is actually hitting now, and it's barely even done anything to uh, raise the global geomagnetism. So next we're going to look at some earthly eruptions here, coming a little closer to home to check volcanodiscovery.com to see the currently erupting earthquakes, which includes Sumanose Jima, which is producing a 6,000 foot ash plume, Mount Raung, that's on East Java, if you're wondering. It's a 14,000-foot ash plume there. Another East Javan volcano, Semeru here, 13,000-foot ash plume there. Popocatapetl exploding down in central Mexico, not far from Mexico City. It's producing a 19,000-foot ash plume. Two Guatemalan volcanoes, Pacaya and Fuego, producing 16 and 15,000-foot ash plumes there, respectively. Two Ecuadorian volcanoes, Sangue and Revenador, they're both exploding. Uptick there at Sangue, it's producing a 30,000 foot ash plume. Revenador, 15,000 foot ash plume. And intermittent emissions from Sabancaya, the Peruvian volcano, are a reminder not to attempt to pole vault the caldera. And leave us a comment if you'd be interested in a shirt that says, Don't pole vault the caldera. John says the paladins stopped at the tsunami out of goodness of their heart. Well, thank goodness for them. Largest quake of the past 24 once again occurred in the Permadec, just south of the Permadec Trench, right there and just northeast of New Zealand. It was a 6.3 magnitude quake. There was the location of that. Another significant quake there. And if you think you forecasted it, by all means, leave us a comment, let us know, and tell us the mechanism behind your earthquake forecasting. And let me just let me just share another tidbit here. The next massive earthquake will occur in this shaded area. That is not a forecast. That is nonsense. Let's check out the rest of the last 24 hours here. Of course, you're going to see countless aftershocks in the Kermadec Trench near the Tongan Trench, which is really the same trench, it just has two names. Following that eight magnitude quake, and indeed that did generate a tsunami. We actually saw some tsunamis there. They were all fairly minor. I didn't hear about too much damage. And we did show some footage yesterday in yesterday's Daily Space Weather video some incoming tsunami wave activity there on New Zealand. So here's that 6.3. That one happened at 1916 last night, about quarter after 7 universal time. And of course, lots of aftershocks with that. A small deep quake in the 4.3 magnitude range there in Western South America one of the common spots for deep earthquakes. Small deep quake under Alaska. It's a 3.1 at 115 kilometers depth. And last but not least, a 4.3 near Timor-Leste. That one at nearly 500 kilometers depth. And let me just reiterate, Stating that the next large earthquake is going to occur in this area right here, this shaded region, that is not an earthquake forecast. And again, 
If you've got a mechanism by which you're forecasting earthquakes or you claim to, by all means, leave us a comment. Our viewers would be more than interested. Continuing on, to remind our viewers that this Smash stream was streamed live at twitch.tv slash smashamash. It's a fantastic mobile streaming platform. If you're viewing on, on, uh, on YouTube, please press like and subscribe over on YouTube. We need your views. Leave us a comment. Tell your friends, foes, science noobs, and science pros about the channel. We read all comments. And check out our playlist as well. We actually just released another video. We'll tell you about that toward the end of this video. We're also on BitChute. There are some exclusives over there. And let's do a short cosmology segment today. We're going to pick a random number using our quantum random number generator. We're going to pick a random number between 1 and 1031. Our regular viewers are aware of why. And for some reason, our random quantum number generator is not generating. That's a new one. Let's see if we can do a tutorial. One. We want one number. We want one set. The minimum number, one. And the maximum number, 1,031. We're going to pick one random number between 1,031. And today's is 311. Visit. I want to visit the Neil Gorel Swift Observatory and see what number 311 is. It's a pretty good band. Leave us a comment if you listen to the ska band, 311. So this is a safer two galaxy here, an active galactic nucleus known as NGC 2992. Here are the X-ray transient outbursts from NGC 2992. It's a pretty consistent X-ray source, as you can see there over the past 16 years. Here's a 30-day chart. And we actually saw a pretty big series of X-ray bursts there right around day 55. So these are the days of the year, folks. I don't know why they don't put that in regular date format, but those are days of the year. And uh, let's see if we can get a visual of NGC 2992. Is it a spiral galaxy? Is it an elliptical galaxy? Well, we may not know until we look. As that's how it is, folks. If you don't look, you probably won't know. So here it is on infrared. And it looks like it does have some evidence of some spiral arms here, as you can see right here, not there, here. You can see a little bit of brighter regions there. Those may be some spiral arms. It looks like a sort of a composite looking galaxy there. Part spiral, part elliptical. And we are looking quite, quite directly down the pole little fields of this galaxy. So that, that's why it looks so bright in the center there. Uh, the brightness of the galactic nucleus in this Safer 2 galaxy is probably hiding some details. Let's take a look at it in, it doesn't show up in hydrogen alpha. There it is in optical red light. Not the best. How about blue light? And there are some more features showing up, some, some indications that it is a somewhat of a spiral galaxy. NGC 2992. Last but not least, here it is on the Chandra. And you can see how bright that is in X-ray. Not too surprising. In this active galactic nucleus known as a Safer 2 type galaxy. And that's today's cosmology segment. Let's get back to current data right after I check the life of the stream. And again, thanks for leaving a comment, Mr. Kotowski. Life force rejuvenation. Has your life force been rejuvenated by watching our channel? Are we a breath of fresh air like Dr. Robitaille? Huh. Well, well, thanks. Leave us a comment and please share the video on your social media. And if you're a YouTube influencer, drop us a line. We'll be more than happy to feature you on the channel, especially if you don't talk about total nonsense. So here's the GOES X-ray chart. And we saw some minor flaring here yesterday. Three B-class flares kicked off. Since then, nada. No proton strikes as no coronal mass ejections have struck. We'll let you know if they do. And next we'll move to the real-time solar wind. So here's this initial pulse from the coronal hole wind stream. You can see this uptick in the solar wind density. And then a downtick in the solar wind density and an uptick in the solar wind velocity. The regular old everyday signature of a coronal hole wind stream. And so the density made it as high as 
nearly 42 protons per cubic centimeter before dipping down to where it is now. And uh, solar wind velocity made it up to about 550 kilometers per second. There's a reading of 544 near the peak. And we're now, we're now at about 524 kilometers per second for a solar wind velocity, solar wind density, 9.11 protons per cubic centimeter. And you can see shifts in the BTBZ as well as the phi angle as that coronal hole wind stream strikes. No real surprises there. Next, the KP index, a measurement of global geomagnetism. That's for all you new viewers. You viewers new to the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. And as you can see there, we got into a small period of geomagnetic unrest, probably associated with that high density. Again, the density made it all the way up over 40 protons per cubic centimeter. And here's a geospace magnetosphere movie. We're looking at pressure over the past four hours. And you may see a small ramp down in the pressure there, although pretty steady over the past four hours. No real surprises there. This is courtesy University of Michigan. And if you want to read about it, check out the details tab at the bottom of the magnetosphere movies. Next, looking at ground magnetic perturbations, there's the current image. And we can see some perturbations there over the north as well as the south. And we would show you an auroral forecast, but we're not expecting major auroras yet. As that initial pulse of that coronal hole wind stream was pretty short lived, so it was dense, but not particularly high velocity. Anyway, that's four hours of data of ground magnetic perturbations, and that's changes in the Earth, Earth's B field, folks. Delta B, geospace delta B, changes in the Earth's B field. Gose magnetometer shows some very weak readings here around midnight. And for you new viewers out there, the N's and M's mean noon and midnight local time for the GOES-16. Anyway, that's three, three days of data there. Some very low readings making it all the way down to about 44 nanotesla. And here's some more magnetic data. This is the heliospheric current sheet's polarity. So you can see the Earth is just in the mode. We are now in the South Pole current sheet. Keep in mind the data is nearly two hours old there and can suddenly change. And this was the point in yesterday's video where I made a forecast for a rising sunspot on the eastern limb. It just turned out to be a plage, but indeed there was an area of magnetic organization there. You can check it out yourself. We'll show you later in the video. It's right in the northeast corner, having risen just after we made yesterday's daily space weather video. A demonstration of actual forecasting as opposed to imaginary forecasting. So let me just bring up the latest frame here, and you can see the Earth's potential field surface source line is still showing up here in the North Pole current sheet. I think it's already snapped across into the South Pole. And if you're wondering where this data comes from, it's from 51 ground-based magnetometers, the National Sunspot Observatory, that is, as well as Stereo A here at Lagrange 0.5 and Stereo B at Lagrange 0.4. Here's the Sun's B field shown in blue, as well as the line of sight coronal hole plot. And you can see that green coronal hole there this one right here, and that is the source of the current incoming coronal hole wind stream. That's where those high density series of protons showed up from. They blasted out of that coronal hole. Once again, keep in mind the data is one hour and 49 minutes old and can suddenly change. And we're seeing a migration here of the North Pole as the Sun commences with cycle 25 and begins the process of flipping its magnetic fields. We show it daily on the channel to immerse our viewers in the data. Now, just a little quick uh, little tutorial here about the Integrated Space Weather Analysis Center. 
we usually show the magnetic field of the corona, but it's actually not really, it's, it's old data. It's two days old now, three days old now. So when you, start, when you first go to the Integrated Space Weather Analysis Center, you'll find yourself on this screen. Just give it a minute to load. If you want to look that stuff up yourself, the coronal magnetic field plot is located on the solar tab on page 9. So that's what the coronal magnetic field plot looked like on the 3rd. And certainly not what it looks like now, so we're not going to really worry about that. Here's a diagram of the atmosphere in terms of Van Allen belts, the, the altitudes of spacecraft. So the SDO, for example, is uh, not on. <laughs> the SDO is not on this. But GPS satellites are on this. By the way, the SDO does a figure eight sort of a pattern around this part of the Earth. And if you went to space, you would probably be around 230 miles of altitude. About 130 miles, about rather about 70 miles under where the GOES-16 is located. So we see some charging hazards here as we move into the realm of electron flux. And we see some charging hazards over places like Central America and the Central Pacific Ocean. Here's the GOES electron flux as measured by that GOES-16, around 300 kilometers of altitude. That three-day chart showing a dip in the electron flux. No surprise there to our regular viewers, as we typically see a dip like that as a result of coronal hole wind streams. It's because of chemical reactions, folks. Next, looking at the one-year chart here of the relativistic electrons. So this is a greater than or equal to 2 mega electron volt electrons. Electrons moving at nearly light speed in the Van Allen belt. So there is the one year chart to put that in context. And it looks like it needs to be updated, actually. And we're expecting this to be maybe a little bit lower than these forecasts here. As you can see that beginning already. The green boxes are the forecast, and the yellow diamonds are not Lucky Charms marshmallows. Those are the observations. Here's the total electron content visualization. This shows you the whole air column from a GPS satellite down to your handset, potentially. It'll show you where GPS errors would be likely to happen, typically around the equator at noon. No anomalies seen there. Here's another diagram of the atmosphere. This one is in kilometers, folks. And you can see the F there on the right. That that F, that is not a curse word. That is the F ionosphere layer around 300 kilometers where the GOES-16 makes its measurements. And here's a visualization of the ionosphere. This one's courtesy of the Government of Australia Bureau of Meteorology. Ionosphere looking normal to me. Actually, some oddities there over South America, but nothing to really write home about. Here's the latest image coming in at 1045 Universal Time. Next, moving into the realm of meteorology, we've got some great meteorology segments to cover for you here. First thing we're going to do is go to nullschool.net and look at the jet streams. Here are the jet streams of the Western world. We've got an equatorial split here over the eastern Pacific Ocean. You can see this split happening right here, as well as extreme meridional jet stream flow here in the north, these north and south portions of the jet stream, <clears throat> and some chaotic jet stream flows in the south. Here are the jets of the eastern world. And I would note once again that the jet stream is blowing backwards here over the equatorial western Pacific and the Indian Ocean, the northern part of the Indian Ocean, at least. As the jet stream usually blows west to east, not east to west, ask a pilot if you don't believe me. Next, looking at lightningmaps.org, we show a real-time lightning map daily. And I like to use lightningmaps.org when I hear thunder. It helps me to convince my foes that I'm Thor. Remember, folks, the first rule of being Batman is not to tell people on YouTube that you're Batman.
Anyway, not that much lightning activity. Next, moving to pressure cells on windy.com. They've got a great mobile app, by the way. I like it. And it's got all kinds of features. For example, if you want to see if a volcano is erupting in real time, one of the things you can do is bring up the sulfur dioxide. So for example, check out all the sulfur dioxide coming out of Hawaii. It's not a coincidence, folks. It's volcanic gas, which is making it in quite high concentrations all the way to Baja, California. Let's also check snow depth as we see major snow here still sitting around in the Northern Hemisphere. And by the way, snow is a global cooling positive feedback mechanism as the albedo effect reflects infrared radiation back into space. Oh, that's new snow. We don't want new snow. We want snow depth. There we go. And you can see how much of the Northern Hemisphere there is covered by snow. Apparently, the Northern Hemisphere is so hot that it's cold. Next, looking at clouds. It's too dark to see them on the visible satellite, so we use the 3.9 nanometer <clears throat> NASA GOES Interactive Weather Satellite here. It's the shortwave radiation map. Look at all the low clouds over the North Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico once again. And here's the water vapor to help put that into context. Clouds, water vapor. And here's a Doppler radar map as well. And we see some snow in Pennsylvania again. As some cold air is being pushed down, and we're seeing a demarcation line here, so the air up here is going to be much colder than the air down here. As that dry mass of air is a, is a, that's a demarcation line. You've got much warmer air coming in like this, butting up against this dry mass of air and being forced to a due easterly trajectory. And that's causing some snow to be pushed all the way down into central Pennsylvania there. Looks like some ice storms in Missouri and Illinois, as well as some more snow in places like southern Oregon, really a large portion of Oregon and Northern California and some in Washington. Probably some wet snow coming down there. And some pretty heavy storms there near the Florida Panhandle. And hey, Smash Team, thanks for tuning into the video. Don't forget to tell your friends, foes, science noobs, and science pros about the channel. Thanks to our patrons, the true source of funding for the content as we make just this, just this side of nothing so far on YouTube to make the content. Thanks, patrons. You can become a patron, too, at patreon.com if you want the earliest updates. And a little side note about our patrons. Patrons, if you're watching the video, go check your Patreon posts as there's something very important about a possible, very significant guest soon to appear on the channel. We need your input as one of the questions for said prospective guest will be a question from patrons. So I'll be composing most of, the pa most of the questions myself for said guest. However, we want our patrons to be one of the contributors. So yet another reason to become a patron, folks, at patreon.com slash smashamash is to submit questions. And we'll be picking the best question or perhaps the most asked question. And again, you can find instructions about that on your Patreon posts. So please check that and please respond with a comment and let us know what you would like asked. Also, if you're viewing on YouTube, press like and subscribe, leave a comment, press the notification bell and press share. Share on your social media. If you're an influencer, drop us a line. We'll be more than happy to feature your channel, especially if you don't talk nonsense. Next, we've got bonus features. We're going to show you the current intensity gram and solar magnetogram to see what's going on with sunspots. <coughs> Excuse me. 
And it looks like zero sunspots, or soon to be zero sunspots. I see no umbrae associated with the former sunspot 2806, which was right there. And let's check for sunspot 2807. I think you could still consider that an umbra. That looks like it's now an alpha class sunspot degrading. And this area up here is just a plage. You can see that slightly brighter region there. No umbrae there. Here's the magnetogram. So we're down to one sunspot now. It's 2807. And it looks like all of the umbrae there are going to be North Pole oriented. As that degrades, that is now just a plage. And here are some more moving pictures. Shout out to Rush, Getty Lee, and Alex Lifeson. If you're watching the video, please leave us a comment. Rush, one of my favorite bands of all time. Here's a 193 Angstrom's SDO view. Again, the coronal hole wind stream that's showing up now is from the, that diffuse series of coronal holes right there. They're North Pole oriented. How about 94 angstroms? Here's a composite. This would be 171 angstroms and the colorized magnetogram. And let me just refresh that. We don't want to cause any seizures for our viewers. Here is the colorized magnetogram in its full animated glory. I will make it that size. It's about it's 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 the last 24 hours, folks. And that's about it. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Remember, stare at the sun, don't drink it if you do, don't drive. Welcome to the Neo Renaissance, and since it'll never be now again, may that solar wind be at your back.